to the 50 percent which you could double underline and say that's the bottom line number so there's a different kinds of formats you can do that uh, if you did not have the borders around the squares you can use the double underlined this way which is pretty effective if you don't have borders being used so uh, keep that in mind just personal types of formatting that you may want to uh, look into as you go now that we finally have that though we can now calculate the uh, double declining depreciation for each year so we're going to start off with year one year one's really simple once we have the double declining rate we're just going to take the cost now and we're going to multiply it times 257.5 and i'm sorry we're going to take the cost which is 257.5 then we're going to multiply it times the double declining rate and what is the double declining rate it equals i'm just going to say equals is that 50 percent that is the double declining rate once again if it's not even note that you could have a rounding error so if it was something like one third or something like that then you want to take the calculation of one divided by three meaning uh, this cell divided by this cell so that the rounding will be in the calculation even though it'll show a number that is rounded it will use excel will use the real number which is one third uh, if that were the case all right so then i'm going to go down here and that will give us the depreciation so this will equal depreciation for year one i'm going to say this equals the 257.5 times the 50 percent and enter that will give us the depreciation for year one if we were then to plug that into our worksheet up here we can see that the depreciation would then be for year one equal to this amount that we just calculated the two uh, the 128,750. if we wanted to calculate them and note just first off that that is far different that's twice as much as the depreciation or it's not twice as much it's it would be twice as much if there was no salvage value but it's far higher of course than the depreciation for the straight line method so then we're going to go down here and we're going to calculate the book value which starts with the cost and the cost is this 257.5 same as straight line then the accumulated depreciation because this is the only year that we have done so far the accumulated depreciation is that 128,750. how do we calculate book value it's going to equal the cost i'm going to point to it minus the accumulated depreciation i'm going to point to it and enter so there's our calculations that this is what a normal problem will ask you is it depreciation they could ask you they could ask you what the accumulated depreciation is they could ask you to calculate the book value the book value happens to be the same as the depreciation and the accumulated depreciation why because we had a 50 percent uh depreciation in this year therefore we had, that's that's going to be half of the thing was depreciated the equipment was depreciated in year one if we look at it in terms of a journal entry now remember that the first uh, accounting class kind of told us in the adjusting entry process what this number was and then had us post it so if we look at the context of year one basically what now what we have now is the equipment on the books at the 257.5 and we have no accumulated depreciation and no depreciation expense we're showing net income in this case of 100,000 and we're saying that we have revenue of 100,000 no expenses so this is net income as of this time it's not a loss that's income it's a credit represented by brackets in this format of the worksheet now in order to do the adjusting entry we're going to have one balance sheet account above the equity section one income statement account generally below the equity section the income statement account is going to be depreciation of course and expense expenses only go one way they go up therefore we're going to debit the expense because expenses have debit balances we're going to make it go up by doing the same thing and the amount we now know will be this 128,750. So then we're going to credit something for the same amount, credit 128,750. I'm going to represent credits with a bracketed or negative numbers uh, for the purposes of this worksheet. If we see that, then we now see that we have the equipment on the books for uh, 257.5. We see that it's an asset in the green area. And we see that we have this other, of course, accumulated depreciation, that, which is abbreviated which is a contra asset account meaning it's an asset account that has a credit balance which is contra to normal asset accounts and if we take the debit minus the credit we have the 128,750 which is the book value then we recorded the depreciation expense on the income statement we can see that revenue of 100 minus the 128,750 means we have a loss this is meaning we're losing money because of the fact that we depreciated 50 percent of this large piece of equipment in this year so as opposed to under the straight line method where we had 
income of 40, this method, we have a loss because of this substantial difference in the expenses. It's a timing difference, meaning that we're going to expense more in the first year than in the last year. We'll see how that works out as we go. Note that if in year two, we can see what's going to happen. We're set up for year two, meaning that the entire uh, income statement is now closed out to the capital account. And so this amount uh, means that we have nothing in depreciation yet until we record it. We're going to assume that we have the same 100000 that we earned in year two, exactly the same revenue earnings. And we're going to start off at this point in time in terms of the equipment and the accumulated depreciation, which does not zero out. You notice that these two accounts are permanent and we'll record the depreciation for the second year. All right, we're going to go down to year two. We're going to record the depreciation for year two. We're going to start off with the same thing. We're going to start off with cost. And the cost is still going to be this 257.5. That has not changed. And then I'm, I'm going to give us the less depreciation for, for year one or less the accumulated depreciation up until this time. So that's everything that's happened accumulated before year two. So in this case, the accumulated depreciation is just the year's one depreciation expense. That's all we have so far. So that's going to give us the book value before uh, this year. So we're going to do this calculation here. I'm going to say this equals the 257.5 minus the book value prior to this uh, year before the depreciation is calculated for this year. Again, we could do some underlines here. I know I'm not doing this all the way through, but I'm going to underline here. And we could have done an underline here. And we could say that this is the uh, bottom line. So I could uh, double underline that and indicate that that's the end result. That's the end result we wanted to see for that particular calculation. All right, so then we're in year two. We're going to then multiply that times the double declining rate. And the double declining rate does not change. It's still the 50%. So we're going to take that 50% and multiply that out. And that will give us the depreciation for year two. So we'll do this calculation. I'm going to say this equals, once again, the book value before this year's depreciation is recorded times the 50% double declining rate will give us then the depreciation for year two. So then if we look at that in our little worksheet up here, our book sheet, worksheet, we're going to say depreciation for year two now is different from year one. It's going to be far less. It's going to be the 64,375. And so we, we're front loading the depreciation in this case. So more depreciation in the beginning years, less in the later years. And we're going to say the cost, we're going to calculate the book value now. The cost is going to be equal to the same as it was in the prior year. It doesn't change. That's what we bought it for. Accumulated depreciation now is going to be the prior year's accumulated depreciation plus the accumulated depreciation we just posted for this year. That will give us the total depreciation. We can also think of it as it's this plus this. It's depreciation up until this point in time being this 193, 125. How do you calculate the book value? Equals the cost less the accumulated depreciation and there's the book value. If we think about this in terms of the journal entry then, once again, they just gave us the book value now. So we have this uh, book value here and we have the depreciation number that we will then use in order to calculate this number. So same journal entry, we're gonna debit depreciation expense by the 64, three, uh, 375 that will record in year two the depreciation down here. So there we have that. Then we're going to record the accumulated depreciation. I'm going to make it a negative for this worksheet of this number. Once I hit enter, it will record this accumulated depreciation here up to our accumulated depreciation on the worksheet. And there's what we have here. So notice that in year two, the depreciation expense is only 64,375, whereas it was 128,750. The accumulated depreciation is 193 to 125. You might be saying, well, why are these two different? Why shouldn't they be equal and opposite if the journal entry is recording an equal amount, equal and opposite amount, an equal amount of debits in the case of the depreciation and an equal amount of credits in the case of accumulated depreciation to these accounts? And the reason is because these income statement accounts are temporary and got rolled over into the capital account. Therefore, if we assume that we accumulated the same 100,000, not the same as this year, but we just performed the same in year two, then the depreciation expense is going to be what it is for year two, which is less than, of course, 
uh, what it was in year one. Therefore, we now have net income. This number is better than this number. This is income represented by the 100,000 income less the 64,375. And uh, therefore, that's what we have. Notice the comparison between the two years up in the straight line method. Okay, so the book value can be calculated as net income or the cost less the accumulated depreciation 64,375 matches our 64,375 over here. Let's continue to year three. So year three, we are down here. We'll do a similar type of calculation. We're going to start off once again with the cost. And the cost is the same as it always is. That's what we bought it for. And there we have it. I can also double underline this real quick. Double underline that. And then I'm going to put an underline here. Oh, not that one. This one. And there we have that. Okay, and then we're going to say less the depreciation. I should say less the accumulated depreciation uh, prior to the current year, up to this point, the depreciation. I could calculate a couple different ways. I could say, well, it, that equals the depreciation expense for year one. It also equals the depreciation expense for year two. So those two added up would be the accumulated depreciation prior to the depreciation or the depreciation.